Hi, welcome back. What we've got here today is a Bedini 2525 power amplifier. It's a Class A amplifier. And um, this is a follow-up to that um, Melos preamp that I did. It belongs to the same owner, a friend of mine. And again, it's a piece of equipment that belongs to an audiophile. Now, these amps have got quite a cult following as well. And this is uh, the sort of thing that people with golden ears like to listen to, and my friend certainly has them, to the extent that he notices, according to him, differences in the sound uh, based on the power cable you use. And this is not a uh, garden hose. This is a special power cable, incredibly robust, very, very expensive. And I'll be quite honest with you, my ears aren't good enough to notice the difference, but that's my limitation, not his. Now, he told me this thing was making a strange uh, noise on the one channel. And again, I must admit, when I listened to it, <laughs> I didn't hear much till we put the sound off, uh, the input off. And then you could definitely hear noise on the one channel, which wasn't on the other one. So I brought it in and I hooked it up. And I still couldn't see anything. I'll show you what I saw. I've got the outputs connected to two dummy load resistors. They're 50 watts. This is a 25 watt amplifier. And this is just a, a quickly hashed together dummy load with um, on a heat sink. There's actually a fan underneath if I need it. But I needed to put it on there because I wanted to see the effect of loading. And that's what we get on the scope. I put in a sound wave left and right channel. And it looked pretty okay to me. So the channels seem to be pretty equal, practically on top of each other, left and right. And I couldn't really see anything wrong with it. That is until I put the scope on DC coupling. And you can definitely see an offset on there between the two channels. Now both of these are zeroed. And if I up the volume, I'm putting up a signal on the signal generator something else becomes apparent. You see that blue trace? See that? There's definitely something wrong with the blue trace. The input is at zero, so there's no input in here. And watch this. 54 millivolts, minus 54 millivolts, DC offset on the right channel. And the left channel, we've got minus 5.571. So that's that offset that we see. But it's not just the offset. There's the offset and there's also distortion happening on the upper part of the waveform. When I said I thought it was a transistor, uh, yeah, I might be right because, you know, that 0.6 volts seems to be a, um, a voltage drop it coincides with the voltage drop between base and emitter of these transistors so it might be one of them has gone shorted but we're gonna have to look at that the problem with this uh, piece of equipment and again very similar to the mellows is that it's very difficult to find information on it on the web there is one schematic flying around which i believe is supposed to be correct but i haven't really looked at it enough to confirm so I'm going to have to open it up and see what we've got going on here. With the top off, you see a pretty familiar sight on a, an amplifier. The power transformer, the uh, power supply capacitors, filter capacitors there. And then we've got the left and right channel. Now, we know that the problem is in this left channel. Now, let's just have a closer look at this. There are a few things that are unusual here, and that is, uh, if we look at the schematic that I found, there's uh, each channel uses two, uh, uses four, I beg your pardon, of these transistors. So one, two, three, four. What they've done is they've put two in parallel on the top part of the wave for the top part of the waveform, two in parallel for the bottom. The system they use is called a quasi-complementary because these are all NPN transistors usually with a complementary output pair, you'd have two or one uh, PNP, and then you'd have the corresponding NPN. This one uses all NPN, 
apparently the designer says he used this because it sounds better. That's a pretty good reason to stick to design concept on an amplifier. But the unusual part is that um, there are three more here. And again, according to the schematic, these are also two N3055Hs. So now that is normally not the case, but uh, it does make it easier when you're uh, trying to do maintenance or repair on these things. So what we have here is we have the, I believe these two are the two in parallel on the top part of the waveform. These are the two bottom ones. These are pre-drivers. There are a few more here, these CAN ones. These are, um, I believe this is two N5416s. A couple of small ones over here and another couple over there. We'll have to look at that. Here's a strange arrangement here. Three resistors in series of the diode. There's another lot. Anyway, I'll have to look closely at this. The um, one thing I've determined is that the schematic does not relate very closely to this particular build which could be a problem. But um, since our offset is 0.6 volts or nearest damn it, I would guess that it has something to do with a transistor. Well, having said that, a transistor or a diode, because when I talk about 0.6 volts as being the uh, fault it's showing, my guess that it's transistors because of the 0.6 volt drop that you'd get between the base and the emitter. If that was shorted, that 0.6 volts wouldn't be there, but then I suppose the signal wouldn't be there. Anyway, 0.6 volts, a diode drop. And I notice a hell of a lot of diodes on here. All these over here, these are big bastards. Three small ones there, that's another one there, another one there, another one there. So there's quite a few of them there. And a couple of, these are Zeners. These are the, uh, I believe they're 16 volts or 18 volt Zeners to power the front end of the uh, of the amp so not I don't I don't suspect those would be wrong but there are a couple more small ones in here so it all be in the bias circuit now that could also be a problem so um, to do the checking I'm gonna have to remove well actually to check these transistors I'm gonna have to remove this section from the from the case and um, I can check a few of them here. I can check diodes, I can check these transistors, but I can't check these because these guys are on the underside. I've got the collector on the can, but the rest is below. These ones here are also pretty close to the board, so they're pretty difficult to test from above. There's always a, sh uh, a risk that if you try to put a lead in there, you'll short it to the case, and I believe the case is also the collector in this case. So I'll have to remove this and then um, and then go to the underside, switch it on, and uh, see what I can find. What I found is that there's very few, if I look on the underside there, which you can't see right now, there are very few wires connecting this board to the rest of the, to the other boards or to the casing. There's this input wire, which comes from the input back here. That's probably easiest just desoldering it from here. Then there's obviously the wire to the speaker, and then there's the power supply. I don't see on the other side, you know, a bird's nest of wires, which you normally have to deal with when you look at these things. So that'll make it a lot easier just to bring it apart. Now, taking it apart is actually not that complex because the heatsink is connected to that board, and it's actually easier to remove this whole. Uh, channel out and what happens is as the heatsink is actually part of the or the side panel of the chassis you've got two screws at the back here that connect to the back plane back panel you got two screws here that connect to the front panel and you got four screws underneath this that connect that to the underside to the uh, bottom of the of the chassis itself so let me do that right here we go remove the screws as you can see, that thing flips over like that. Now, obviously, it's been held in place by the uh, this connection to the input uh, cable. But it is effectively completely free from the chassis. So what I'm going to do now is desolder that input wire. 
um, and see if we can't actually flip this whole thing completely. With the input cable can disconnect it, this is what we get. Pretty neat. There's actually enough length of wire that allows us to lay it on its on its side. Everything is insulated. So we're good. Um, this would be the positive supply. That would be the negative supply. That would be the ground. We've got the speaker connection here and that's it. That's pretty neat. The input goes here. There's a ground wire and the uh, signal input to the first uh, DC blocking capacitor. And we're good. So now I'm going to just uh, do some checks with the multimeter. Nothing special. And uh, see if we've got any transistors that are open. Blown or shorted rather. And I'll report back in a minute. Well, it's always the last things you check that you find the error in. I turned this upside down, as you saw. I checked all the transistors. They all seem to be fine. So I flipped it over and started checking all the diodes. And the last diode I checked was one of these small guys over here, which is completely shorted. Everything else is fine. This bugger shorted. So, <clears throat> I was going to say I could have done that without uh, removing the flipping the board, but I'm going to have to flip it anyway to desolder. So I'm going to, these are small signal diodes used for biasing, and I believe the one in 4148 would do a good job in there. So I'm going to replace this guy and see what we've got. So the diode's replaced. Now I'm going to switch it on with a light dimmer, two lamps only. Let's see what this has done to the DC offset, if anything. There's our 52 millivolts that we had on there. And our offset has disappeared. Okay. Well, that doesn't prove anything just yet. The offset's gone, but let me get a signal on here and see what, the, what those sine waves look like now. Well, so far so good. Would you look at that? One kilohertz sine wave coming in. Obviously, I soldered in the input wires, which I desoldered. And it's looking pretty decent. Seems to be no offset. We were talking about the blue guy. How about that? One bloody little two cent diode was messing up this whole masterpiece. That's the guy over there. I screwed in one of the uh, screws to the heatsink at the back just to make sure this thing is stable while I'm testing it. I don't want it flapping around in the breeze. But it looks like this thing is a go. And the DC offset, uh, as we saw, and I'm just going to recheck it quickly, DC offset seems to be 14 millivolts. That's damn good. Right. I think this is a wrap. Guys, this was, um, as I said, just a little report, which ended up being the whole fault finding. This turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. Um, and I'm actually quite happy because I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to get the, the 2N3055H transistors original ones anyway, not fakes. I was concerned that it was one of those transistors. Um, but it looks like we had one diode blown, which was giving us that 0.6 volts offset. That fact that it was 0.6 volts was the, the first hint. Um, I actually didn't think about those small diodes, and I should have, because those are in fact the biasing diodes. And um, Obviously, this still needs a listening test, but uh, it looks like this one has been resolved. So, my friend's going to be happy. You can connect the mellows to this one and just uh, enjoy, this, enjoy the music. Right, thanks for watching. See you again soon.